to do this, I need a way that you can see me. That might work. That's going to be you. Absolutely beautiful. And I can put holes in the wall wherever I want the camera to be. Right. Hopefully, that right there will do it. For now. So in this video, you're going to see me design and develop this jet unit. It runs and it works. Um, I've pulled it out of its testing station just to show you guys a better view of it. That is normally what it would be housed in uh, for testing. But eventually it's going to be mounted on my inflatable stand-up paddleboard and then just propel me along, hopefully. That's the goal at least. Okay, so just really quickly, um, the first half of this video is going to be a little bit rough. I wasn't planning on making a YouTube video or series at all until about halfway through this video. So I've pieced it together. Uh, uh, so I've pieced it together with photos and videos the best that I can, just taking with my phone. So you'll find the aspect ratio and stuff is off. Going forward from here though, and this video, I'm gonna try and make it a look make it look a lot better because I've got videos actually in mind. Um, enjoy. Okay, so it all started with this impeller and bucket. Now it looks pretty in slow motion, but at the moment it's useless. And to solve that, I made an intake and a pump to house the impeller. Now, don't judge me for this. My drill is basically brand new and I didn't want to risk it getting wet. First test. I have to fully submerge the intake under the water. There isn't enough suction to bring the water up by itself. Ah, oh, yikes. Not exactly how I want the first test to go. Bit of a failure. But with that said, the Ryobi drill is only spinning at 1600 RPM max, which is about five times slower than most jet drives normally operate at. Literally the next day at work, I found a Milwaukee drill in the bin. All I had to do was take the gearbox off of it and run it straight from the armature. The armature is the center of the motor and runs at the maximum RPM. From there, it's geared down towards the chuck, which that's what I was running off initially. I'll just see if it primes itself. Oopsies. One eternity later. I need to climb it. Right. Holy shit. Alright, so at this point I'm really excited to start seeing some results. The pump is pumping. Now to get it thrusting, we need to restrict the outlet with the nozzle, creating high velocity. With the nozzle, I've restricted the diameter by about 30%. The extra load that's put on the motor is cutting out and confusing the electronics of the drill. I need more power.
Whenever I was going over about 70% throttle, it would cut out. Introducing the M18 Fuel 16 inch chainsaw motor and electronics. I'm really enjoying this project. Getting ready for the new motor, I took some time off of work, redesigned the pump, and made a, man a little bit of mounting assembly. Nice. So the new parts of this design is a whole new intake that has a top mount to stabilize the motor mount just to stop it from flexing. It's actually a two part system here, but it's gonna act as just one part. So this is your intake slash motor mount. You mount the motor, then it has an adapter that is grub screwed onto the motor shaft and that also adapts to the all thread that runs through the entire center and eventually spins the impeller. You've got the impeller mounted right here. There's an inside view. I've made a little plastic piece here on the intake go out a little bit with the all thread. I'm hoping that's gonna stop water going back through this way towards the motor because I don't want it also going to that bearing there. See that one's rusted, I actually need to replace that. Right now, the impeller is just locked with a nut inserted inside of it. It has a hex inside of that impeller and then it's just locked there on another one and that's locked at the right depth. The next piece that slides on after it, another key feature real quick, is actually how this is set up. So the inside follows on further than the outside, and then same with the, with the corresponding part, it's the opposite. The inside carries forward and locks into this. I just gotta line it up there. This is what's called a stator. So it corrects the flow of the water straight from the impeller. That locks over there and similarly to the part inside of the similarly to the part inside of the intake, it's trying to stop. Oh, I've designed this to hopefully stop the backflow of water and squirting out of here. So once this is tightened up and squished together. Hopefully no water can come out of these little gaps. After that, I then go to the nozzle, to which the nozzle's job is literally just to restrict it and increase the velocity of the water. So that's the assembly there. Why this has a gap is the mounting plane actually goes between them and it sandwiches all together, holding it all locked in, as well as then bottom bolts on the intake here actually bolting into this. Um, and then these are held together with just some all thread with some nuts on it currently. Testing time, my poor bathtub.
test went pretty good. It had good power at low throttle, but around 70% throttle, the motor would stutter and not reach full RPM, similarly to the drill. Here you can see the pump bolts rattled loose and I nearly drowned the new motor in electronics. I got the leaking somewhat fixed and I bought a pool for further testing. This is running a 5 amp hour battery, which turns out is a restriction for this motor under heavy load. The 5 amp hour battery that I was running in that clip had a maximum amp draw of 50 to 60 amps. I swapped it over for a 12 amp hour battery and the results shocked me. One hundred and seventy seven amps peak. No stuttering at full throttle, just straight power. And a few more leaks. This is how the pump sits present day. You're up to scratch on the build. In another video, I'll be trying all kinds of different pump iterations to make it as efficient and as powerful as I can. Enjoy.